Today, I wanna to show you how to use the redirection plugin for WordPress. Now, this plugin is great for managing page redirects on your site. Now, I personally prefer to use a separate plugin instead of the functionality that ships with a lot of SEO plugins, such as Rank Math and also Yoast SEO, because it makes it much easier to change SEO-based plugins if you also don't have to migrate 200 odd redirects. Now, in this video, I'll show you how to install and use the wizard to set up the plugin. You'll learn how to obviously create a redirect. You'll then learn how to group your redirects so you can organize them. And I'll also show you how to view incoming 404s so you can then go ahead and create a redirect forum. Then we'll look at how to import and export all of your redirects. And finally, I will show you how to create a regex. And this is useful for when you change CMSs and you wanna keep historical links. So here is my WordPress site. The only thing I have done is installed it, obviously, and created one extra page, which is about us. And that is it. So to start things off, let's go ahead and install redirections. So go to plugins, add new, and search for redirection in the search and make sure you install this one up the top here with two plus million active installations. Do not install this one here on the right. So click on install now, then click on activate. Now we are redirected back to the plugins page and you should notice this message up here. Please complete your redirection setup. So click on the link. And the most important thing with this module to understand is what the source URL and the target URL is. So the source URL is the old URL and the target is the new URL, the URL that you want to redirect to. So it's important to understand that. Scroll down and click on start setup. So the first option you have, and by the way, you can change these options later on. The first option you have is monitor permalink changes in WordPress posts and pages. This will automatically create a redirect if the permalink to a post is changed. Now, the permalink can change for many reasons. The most common is that the title changes because the permalink is generated from the title. So if you were to publish a post and then a week later you change the title, which then changes the permalink, redirection will automatically create a new redirect for that. Now, personally, I don't like the plugin doing all that type of stuff because after a while, you may end up with multiple redirections because you've tweaked the title throughout the years and you end up with a database of just useless redirections. I personally like to keep this off, but it's there if you need it. The other option is keep a log of all redirects and 404s. Now, I like to turn this on and what this option does is that it'll log all active redirects but most importantly, it'll also log 404s. Now, logging 404s is useful, especially if you have just migrated to a new site, because if you have a lot of content and you've imported in, say, 100 or 1,000 redirects, which isn't uncommon, by tracking the 404s, you can see if you have missed any important pages. So if you migrated from one CMS to WordPress and you migrated over 500 redirects, and then after a few months, you notice that the same page is getting called for multiple times, but it's producing a 404. Well, then it's best to create a redirect for that. So I always like to keep that checked. And then below, you can also um, specify if you want IP information stored. But again, all of this can be modified later on. So click on continue and set up and then finish setup. Let it do its thing and then click on finished. Let's now create our first redirect. And what we are going to do is if I go to pages and I'll open that up in a new tab, we have this about us page and the URL is about dash us. But let's imagine in our old CMS, the URL is pages slash contact. So let me just copy that in. And if we go to pages slash contact, it produces a 404. Now let's create a redirect for this path so that pages slash contact goes to the new about us page. Now to do that, let's go back to redirect and then click on add up the top here. And in the source URL, it'll be pages 
contact and the target should be just about dash us. And if you click on the cogwheel, you have way more options here. And most importantly, you can change the HTTP code. Now, nine times out of 10, it will be a 301, but there are some cases where you may wanna use a 302 or even a 307. But normally, you don't really modify those. And another thing I'll mention is you can add redirects into groups. And this is a handy way of grouping and managing your redirects. So once everything has been added, click on add redirect. And now if we come along in here and refresh, it's gonna redirect us directly to the about us page. And we can see that in action. So let's open up the network and let me paste this in again. And you can see it goes to redirect 301. You can see right here, a 301, let me, Zoom that in, or well, not that one. Let's zoom in this one, there we go. You can see a 301, and then it just redirects us to about us. Let's jump back to the redirection admin section, and let's take a look at these menus up the top here. So if you click on groups, again, as I mentioned earlier, groups allows you to simply group and organize your redirects. So in the past, I have created, especially if I've migrated a whole bunch of redirects in, I might create a July 2020 redirection group. And I know that everything has been moved over at that particular time. Another useful groups is if you have affiliate links, you can create a group called affiliates and then just add in all your redirects into that group. Because over time, this list will get big. So you may have a couple hundred redirects. It just depends how many uh, redirects you have. But on one of my sites, say webwash.net, I've got about 200 redirects because previously I was using Drupal and then I migrated everything over to WordPress. Then if you click on site here, you can configure site-wide redirection. And then if you click on log, you can see the logs of when a redirect was used. Now it is logging this because we have switched it on, but again, you can turn that off. And then if you go to 404s, you can see which pages have produced a 404. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is a great page to check and see which pages need redirects. Because if you see over a few months that people are hitting the same page over and over again, but are getting a 404, then make sure you create a redirect. And also it's good for SEO as well. You wanna avoid as many 404s as possible. And then if you go to import slash export, here you can batch import redirects using a CSV file, a .ht access, and even a JSON file. Now, of course, the CSV file is the simplest, especially if you are going to use something like Google Sheets. And then if you scroll further down, you can export the redirects out in a JSON format. And this is useful for migrating redirects between different installs of WordPress. And then if we click on options, here you can configure the options for the plugin. So if we scroll a little further down from logs, you can specify how long you wanna keep the logs in the site. I recommend that you leave it at a week because depending on how much traffic you get, you're going to have a lot of logs. And then under IP logging, you can specify if you want no IP logging, full IP logging or anonymized IP logging. And then if you scroll further down under URL here, you can specify if you wanna monitor permalink changes to automatically create the redirects. Then from default URL settings, you can specify if the redirects will be case insensitive or ignore trailing slashes. Now, this one actually caught me off guard, especially moving from Drupal over to WordPress. Drupal doesn't use a trailing slash, WordPress does. So for one of my sites, I had to turn this on. And then you have this default query matching and then here you have three options, exact match in any order, ignore all query parameters, and the last one, ignore and pass all query parameters. Now, a query parameter is something like a UTM code, a parameter that gets passed through the URL. So to demonstrate, let's go back here. And what I'll do is I'll paste in the old URL, which is pages slash contact, and then we have this UTM code. So. What's gonna happen if we go to this page? If we go to it, it's gonna produce a 404. Why is that? The reason for that is because this setting here is set to exact match in any order. So that means that we need to add this UTM code in here, okay? Now, 
That isn't a scalable solution because the UTM codes change. And also email newsletter providers throw in their own query parameters. So you don't want to create the one redirect with multiple query parameters. It just doesn't make sense because then you'll end up with hundreds of redirects. Now, the simplest solution is to, let's go back here, is to change it to ignore all query parameters. So if we do that and click on update, and then we come here, what's going to happen is it'll redirect us, but then it will strip out the query parameter. Now for UTM codes, that makes them pretty much useless because the UTM code has to get passed to the website. The other option is to simply set it to ignore and pass all query parameters. So if we scroll down, click on save, go there again. Now at first, simply changing the option won't work. And the reason for that is because the browser caches the response. But if I open up a different browser, so here I have Chrome and it's incognito. And if I go to this URL, it should pass the UTM source over to the new page. So if we refresh, there you go. You can see that we have been redirected to about us and the UTM code has been passed across. So any query parameter will get passed across. Now it is important to set this up correctly and also make sure you test it because if you're sending out emails, then all of a sudden those links may not work. So I do recommend that you first test it out here and also make sure the links in your newsletters actually work. Now, the final thing I wanna show you is how to set up a regex. Now, why would you do that? So let's just imagine we have migrated from another CMS over to WordPress. And in the previous CMS, you could access the pages by going to node slash and then the ID of the page. So one, two, three or, or 900 or two or whatever. And we wanna redirect any path, which is node slash ID to P equals, and then the ID of the post. So if I go to node slash one, it should automatically, of course, it's gonna give me a 404 now, but it should automatically redirect me to P1, which is the post ID for the first post, which will then redirect us to hello world. Now you can get the post ID by editing the post and then just grabbing it, no, let me close that, and by grabbing it from here. So here you can see post equals one. Now to set up the redirect, all you need to do is go to redirects, then click on add new, and from the dropdown on the right, select regex, and then in source URL, add in a caret slash node slash. Now, I just wanna make it clear that I am not a regex expert, okay? But this actually works for webwash.net because webwash was on Drupal and now it's on WordPress. So all you have to do is add in this regex as the source URL. So this caret means the beginning of the string slash node slash, and then any parameter passed in there. We will then get passed to slash and then question mark P equals and then dollar sign one. So that means anything passed in through here will get passed in to dollar one and then click on add. And now if we go to node slash one, we'll be redirected to this hello world post. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about WordPress and also Drupal and other web technologies, head over to webwash.net. Anyway, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.